I explore. get a shot here. This is not the most interesting thing. I'm going to kind of challenge myself here because I know that this thing has a really good in-body stabilizer and I've been experimenting with how slow I can get it before I, it gets shaky. So I'm going to put it down to like, let's try a, a fourth of a second and see if I can get a, try to blur the motion here of these people going through the thing. Although right as I said that, suddenly there's like no people. So I'm on a fourth of a second, f5.6, okay. And yeah, that's, that's tack sharp, looking good, okay. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to get kind of the whole, I don't want the outside of the tunnel. Okay, and in this case, you know how I was just saying I use the tracking? In this case, I'm not. I'm just letting the camera choose where to focus because it kind of doesn't matter for this shot. Okay, so overall on a fourth, looking sharp. Not every single one, but some of them are sharp. Let's try a half of a second. I'm going to get a good stance here. And there you go, tech sharp on a half second. So that's another thing that I was excited for. It's not like a game changer for me. I don't need to be able to shoot at half a second handheld, but I just did and it looked pretty good. So that's, again, I guess this is a good time to say that when I'm picking a camera and deciding what camera to use, and especially when I'm getting a new camera, because my, my camera was doing great for me. I didn't need to change. But what I'm thinking of is, if I get this new camera, how is it going to allow me to shoot in ways that I couldn't shoot in before? Like, how is it going to expand my ability as a photographer to be creative? Not like, oh, it's got more megapixels, or, you know, or it's got face tracking for the sake of face tracking, you know? This kind of things. It's more like, if I have these extra features and capabilities, what kind of photos will I be able to create? What creative you know, elements can I add to my shots because I have these. That you were not able, able to do before. That I was not, or I was able, but it would be more pain in the ass. I would have to bring a tripod and set it up here, which is, I mean, as an artist, you should, that's a stupid excuse, right? I should be able to bring my tripod, you know, have the motivation to do that and set it up. But sometimes it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Like, this is not such a great shot that I would go home, get my tripod, come back here, I necessarily. Should, you might not have the tripod every time. Yeah, and it, it might not be such a, like, it might not be worth it, at least I get to try it this way. So it just gives me more freedom to control the shutter speed and things like that, you know, more. And so the, the fact that it has the in-body stabilizer and the stabilizer is really good and I can shoot it half a second, that's pretty cool. It wasn't top of my list of reasons to get this camera, but it was, you know, it's interesting. And again, as my first impression, I didn't know how good it was going to be. It's pretty damn good. <laughs> it's impressively good. Again. Maybe not as impressed as Axel was earlier about the focus, but I'm impressed. I guess that's cool. Nice thing about that. Let's go through there. Let's keep going. That would have been a good moment. I kind of missed it there. The truck going by with these people. But the people still look pretty cool. Closer. I like how they're all spaced out just right. So this is a case where at F2, I do prefer having the tracking focus, the one with the little center selector, rather than letting the camera choose. Because the camera sees that guy's face and it focuses on the face, because it's a face. But I don't want that. I wanted the people in the foreground chart. Therefore, I like being able to choose my focus point at all times, but let it track it in, if necessary. So I'm glad this mode is in the camera, even though it's a little bit tedious to access. We're in the middle of the street, and we've actually used this spot before in another video to do panning shots, a whole video just about panning. But I'm gonna try it out with this camera right now to see how it goes. So I'm um, putting my settings on Let's say a 30th, okay, and f5.6, okay, and then I'm gonna just pick out a car that's coming down the street, focus on it with the tracking function as I used all the time, and then follow through and hopefully get a nice blur and a very nice sharp car. And I do these shots less these days, but I've done it a lot, 
with my other Nikon, my D4, so it'll be a nice comparison in my mind. You know, I haven't really tried it with this camera just yet. So let's see, those are a little too slow. Let's get a faster car. Okay, make sure everything's ready. Okay, let's try this guy here. Okay, not a ton of cars out tonight, but I'm already blown away with how sharp that is. That's great, let's try this dude. And you see there, exactly what I said, this very slight lag of the viewfinder being black before I see anything didn't help me there. That was not good. And that's not an issue with this camera, that's just an issue with all mirrorless cameras as far as I'm, I'm aware. There's always a slight delay. So I gotta be ready earlier. I gotta have my camera already up to my eye and looking through here for the subject. So again, I'm gonna get ready to have the viewfinder already on so I don't have to deal with any lags. Uh, cars are going a little bit too slow. Okay. That was pretty cool. All right, so let's get out of here. We're gonna keep going into Kabuki Cho and do some more typical street stuff. So at, at this point, I should say that we are not affiliated with Nikon or anything like that. I didn't get this camera for free. We're not sponsored. They're not paying us for this video. I just bought it with my own money. I like this camera. Well, I mean, I was interested in it and now I that I got it, I like it so far. And I just thought it'd be fun to give this, to give this impression of the camera. Um, so don't think too much into it, please. Don't think that we're gonna turn into a review channel or something like that. It's just, it's a vlog. <laughs> like all our other content these days, okay? But um, yeah, I would say we're gonna keep going. We got a buddy here. Hello. Hi, this guy, Shashin. Okay, hi. Nice, nice, very good. Okay. Wow. じゃあ、ここ、ここでこのフランス人です。フランス人です。そう。フランス。フランス人です。アメリカ。アメリカ。そうそうそう。フランス。アメリカ。そうです。こんな時代にもう本当ありがとうございます。あ、大丈夫です
But it's not the most interesting scene, honestly. It's just okay. Now, someone might be wondering, why don't I just leave it on the automatic thing where it switches automatically? I don't like that because it, I don't want the screen to be on all the time. It drains the battery. So I just have, I'd rather just manually push where I need it because 90% of the time I'm using the EVF, the viewfinder itself. Okay, it's kind of a cool little dark alley passage. Oh, well, that's a really cool bike. Now, people who have followed me for a while, especially my, my blog, will know that I love bikes. Now, I think I might be too close for this bike. But it's okay. But I think I can get it. Here we go. Yeah, nice. And it's tack tack sharp. You know, the ISO looks great on this camera when it gets high, like the noise and stuff. But if I can get it lower, why not? So there we go, on a 15th. You know, in our Ueno video, I did the same, I shot that graffiti. This is another example of something that a lot of people might not care about, but I like it. And I've been collecting bicycles in the sense of shooting them like this for years. And I have like 200 of these. And it's just, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's just something that interests me. It's to the point where I'll squat next to a bird poop covered garbage can in a dark alleyway in Shinjuku, and I will sit here and photograph this for a minute. I That's think how much I love these things. I think people need to have an understanding of what a dump where, I'm in. Yeah, where, exactly. where you okay. are. It's like sprayed in bird poop. I'm making sure not to touch it. I want to move already, but I'm going to stay here so Axel can show you guys it's where I am to get this photo. Whoa. All right, right here. But there's another way in. We're going to go around this way. I love this little part of Shinjuku. It's dark. It's dirty. It's very gritty and kind of cyberpunk, which is something I enjoy. And this poster is really cool here. But we're going to go in this way. I'm still on manual in a 15th. What did I say about double checking your settings? I'm still in the bicycle settings from five minutes ago. Back to aperture mode. Okay, nothing great here right now, but I do like the colors of the sign, the kind of boldness of it all. Okay, so I might, you know, chill here for a minute, see if a subject comes up. Okay, and there we go. There's kind of a subject there. Not great, but, you know, something. Let's keep going in there for now. It's just a cool scene. There's not going to be anybody here. I almost never see people here, but I do like the colors and composition of this scene. I'm going to go to manual and a 60th. Another little <laughs> small thing I don't like in terms of ergonomics that I just remembered is I don't like that this is a dial, this aperture, you know, shutter mode dial. On my D4, it's a button, and then you turn this. It's a little bit faster to do than like I have to look at the dial and flip it. That's a small thing. But again, I stress that ergonomics and the way you use the camera are so important, much more important than like pixel count and stuff like that in terms of your shooting. Sure, in terms of the final results, if you need more resolution for something, then you need it, fine. But just when you're shooting, that, that doesn't matter as much as like a simple little thing like is the dial good or bad, right? Let's keep going this way. I'm going to shoot this little passage, which I've shot before, but it's exceptionally dark. And I'm going to kind of see how this camera handles it because this is a tricky shot. And, you know, again, I can get really low on the shutter here. So I'm going to go to uh, 15th and f2.8. And you might be wondering, wait, wait, you're shooting on f2 the whole time. Why are you now on f2.8? The reason is this scene has a lot of depth. And so I want to get a little bit more DOF to try to get more of it sharp. If I do it on f2, maybe too much of it will be a little bit blurry. So out of focus. So I'm just going to try it on f2.8 with a pretty slow shutter, which is only a 15th. And already I love, I'm loving the colors. It's so much more green in camera, not just this camera, but any camera I've used here, rather than here. I don't know how green it looks for you, Axel. Super green. Super green, right? It's because the white balance just can't deal with the kind of cool fluorescent over here, and there's much more green fluorescent over there, and the white balance just goes crazy. But that's cool. That's kind of the beauty of the of photography in this case. It brings out those colors that are subtly there. Dude, look, there's keys here. Somebody oh, yeah. just left the whole thing of keys. And yeah. that's, 
That's a little weird. I'm not going to touch that, but that's a funny little thing. I'm get a little closer because I have a wide angle lens. I want a tighter shot here. I'm going to get low as well. Okay. And then I'm going to do one where I'm focusing in the distance there. And I'm trying to get a person walking through. Oh, there we go. There's a person. And then I'm going to do another one where I'm focusing on this bicycle here in the foreground. Okay. And already I can say, I could even see that through the viewfinder because it's a mirrorless camera, is that it's a little bit overexposed because there's a lot of blackness in the scene and I'm using the uh, evaluative metering. So, you know, the camera's kind of making a mistake here in how it exposes it. Yeah, I'm taking a bunch of shots, just focusing on different things, but there's no subject right now. So it's just kind of for experimentation. Let's get a little closer. Now here I love the, the weird plant, not weird, but you know, the kind of pointy plant. The uh, stuff on top is all green, and then the passage back here, let's see if I can fit them into some kind of a frame altogether. I'm going to focus on those people back there right now. Nice uh, dash of yellow. Yeah, nice dash of yellow, agreed. And now it's gone, but now it's a silhouette. Now I'm doing no plant. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that. That was pretty cool. Despite being on a 15th, because they were very slowly walking towards me, they're actually really sharp. There's not a lot of motion blur. So that was pretty cool. But that had nothing, again, nothing to do with the camera. That was just, that worked because of the way they were moving and the settings I had just kind of worked together with that. I'm actually happy with what I got with those people. Let's just keep going. That was great. I'm just going to get one last shot from here. Just a nice, normal kind of shot of the whole thing because it's a pretty scene, busy in all the right ways. I'm going to go up to a 30th and F4, let the ISO get a little higher because anyway, this camera performs well in low light and get a nice shot with depth. I don't think I need minus two anymore. Minus one is enough. And I'm just going to wait for a good person to walk by. I just saw one, but I missed it. It was just too late. There we go. That was cool. Okay. All right. And so we're back on the streets of Kabukicho. And I think at this point, this is where we're gonna wrap up for today. Cause I have a feeling after I cut this all down, it's gonna be a pretty long video. There's a lot of things I covered. Talking about this camera, which like I said, got about a week ago, shot less than 500 photos of it on it until tonight. So I'm pretty new, new to it, but loving it so far, very fun to use. Reiterating that we're not affiliated or sponsored. It's just purely a new camera for me and I wanted to talk about it because I think that'd be fun on this vlog. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And of course, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. We are very, well, I am very responsive. I actually, you respond to the comments too sometimes. I read them, all of he them He reads them sure. all, right? He yeah. reads them all and I respond to all of them. Every single one right now. Someday we won't be able to keep up, but for now it's every single one. And please don't forget, new t-shirts available. Thank you for those of you who have supported us on Patreon. We really, really, really appreciate that. That helps us you know, not give up and keep going with this channel. And anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And remember always, challenge your eye.